Welcome to a new tutorial everyone. Did you know that of the cities in America, six of the top ten for coffee drinking are in Washington State, with my city Bellingham being number ten on the list. We drink a lot of coffee here, even when we're camping, we drink it year-round, we just have coffee shops on every corner. So let's make a coffee mug using our dot mandala techniques. I'll show you how to do it. I bought this plain mug on Amazon and I will have that in the links and I washed it with soapy water and now I'm going to wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol to get all the residue off of it so the paint will adhere better. Now instead of using the regular acrylics, these are multi-purpose acrylics by Folk Art and these are safe to use for dotting on dishes that you're going to be using for food products. And this is a paint that you can cure in your oven. It's non-toxic and this is safe for everybody. So I'm laying my cup down on a piece of bubble wrap and I'm just propping up the handle with a stone to make it a little bit more level so I can center the mandala where I want it to be. I'm beginning with a large black dot in the center and this is about 1.5 centimeters across. Making sure I get that down there. The multi-purpose paints are a little bit different than the Amsterdam acrylics or the Martha Stewart acrylics or, or even the Americana acrylics that I've been using. This paint is thicker than those paints and you can't really mix it with a pouring medium if you're going to be using it for a food product. So you kind of have to use it as it is. Even if you use water it tends to bubble so you don't want to mix it with a lot of water uh, and get bubbly paint. So you're going to have to use it as it is out of the bottle and you'll need to do a lot of stirring to get it to be the consistency for dotting. So I've made my first eight dots around the center and now I'm just lining up the next size dots with the previous ones. And because this paint is a little bit thick, it was a little hard to get it off the tool. And I did mix some of the classic green with white to give me a different shade of green. I got a few bubbles in that, but they weren't bad. I was able to pop them with a uh, toothpick. Oops, I got that one off a little bit. I'm going to go back and fix that. I can see that that's not lined up properly. It's a little wonky. So I've got a Q-tip here. I'm just going to swipe that off of there before it dries. And just keep wiping till it's all off. This is really pretty easy to do if you make a mistake. So once I have the dots off, I'm just going to try and line that back up properly with the row across from it and that'll give me good placement. It won't be off center. And it's just good to remember when you're doing freehand mandalas without guidelines is to look across the center to the other row and then line it up. There, that's much better. Again, my paints were a little bit thick, so I'm just going to keep swirling these larger dots until they flatten down a little bit. And now I'm going with my little micro tool in between those first green dots with a white dot. And then using my manicure stylus, to do kind of a, a light lime green dot to fill in that space. Now I'm using my smallest tool, my polymer clay sculpting tool, 
with the fine ball point to walk these dots up just as small as I can get them. It's very easy to walk dots on these mugs. It's such a flat and glossy surface. It makes it very easy to walk the dots as far as you need to. And try and count the same number on each side. That will just make your petal look very symmetrical. Now we're going to be adding three small green dots to the end of that petal. Doing that in the lime green. And then I'll be finishing that row in the bright green, walking that up with the uh, micro dots again around the white row. And you can see how I'm just turning the mug, holding it with one hand, and then sort of bracing my fingers on the side of the mug while I walk those dots up. Just be careful with your placement so you don't end up sitting your hand in wet paint as you try and turn the mug. You can see what that looks like. Close up. And now we're going to add a small dot in between the petals with the white. Just filling up some space. And now I'm using the camel color to make a large dot in between the petals. The inside of the mug is a mixture of greens and browns, so that's why I chose this color scheme. Adding a small dot in the same camel paint at the top of that large dot. Again, just filling the space. And flatten those larger dots down a little bit because I know I'll be doing top dots later. Then we're going to add two dots in the camel at the end of that row. And you're just imagining a guideline going up the center of that dot and then those two dots will go on either side of that. And then add the third dot in the light green. I mixed up a couple, a green and some white to get this shade of light green. And now I'm adding a lime green final dot on the first green petals. Now I need to allow this to dry completely before I do my top dots. I'm adding some light green here on top of the bright green. It took about 30 minutes to dry before I did the top dots. And now some white top dots on the larger light green dots. Then using the bright green folk art paint to make top dots on the camel dots. And that is all done. I made three of these. Since I had the paints already, didn't want my paint to go to waste. So I made three, I let these dry overnight completely and then we're going to cure them in the oven. So I got a baking tray, put some parchment paper on it, and put on the mugs, which have dried overnight. And I'm going to put these in the oven on the middle rack. The oven is cold right now. I haven't turned it on yet. I'm just going to turn it on now to 350 and tell it to preheat. Put the mugs in on the middle rack. Oh, 
and so the oven is going to heat up to 350 and I'm going to let it bake for 30 minutes at 350 and when the timer sounds I'll let it sit there for another 30 minutes with the heat off and then they're ready to come out and cool completely on top of the stove. Now the paint is completely cured on there. It is dishwasher safe and uh, you can use this with food products. It's very easy to use this folk art paint to paint on ceramic mugs and I hope you give it a try. My next tutorial will be talking about glazing ceramic mugs in a kiln. Until then, give this a try. Join me on my Facebook page or come to my website. Thanks for watching.